now we will turn to architects, actually. Uh, we heard a lot of engineers, uh, planners, and now we will have a guest from Netherlands, a partner and architect from Next Architects, Michael Schreinemachers, uh, and he's going to explain us about building bridges in time of transition. Um, you got some interesting presentations, and I um, got the opportunity to um, to zoom out a little bit and, and maybe uh, share some thoughts on uh, where we are at the moment in uh, working in infrastructure and what is designers is uh, thriving us to to do so. Um, I think it, I start with this. Uh, uh, um, image of what is about happening today. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things going on, uh, and we just uh, we just uh, uh, left the crisis behind us, the Corona crisis, where it, a crisis always comes with two sides. One is the the the, the urge to um, to step up uh, because there's some something troubling us. There's decay, uh, uh, but there's also opportunities. I think um, the corona crisis gave us the opportunity worldwide to actually accelerate with the uh, uh, enrollment of the bicycle uh, lanes in, in the many uh, cities around the world, like in Paris, like in New York, like uh, any, uh, a lot of places. And um, I think there's a lot of things in this array of, of transition. I think we have uh, multiple... Um, uh, transitions going on uh, with lots of drivers and lots of new in, uh, innovations and um, some of these crises like the corona crisis pandemic uh, actually got accelerating some of these uh, issues and how do we deal with it how do we cope with it how do we respond and what opportunity opportunities opportunities do we see but as I said um, mostly it comes from a crisis uh, which also have have a, a, a backside. Uh, so um, um, all these futuristic ideas about um, a sustainable um, mobility in cities, uh, they now tend to become more uh, re real. As I said, during the pandemic, but already before that, uh, there were lots of uh, uh, initiatives to um, to focus more on bicycle uh, bicycle lanes in cities, like you see here in China. Um, but uh, they challenged, or that it's, it's always the question, is it an optimization uh, or is it really an in innovation where it really is leading into change? Um, where we see now in the Netherlands, we are um, uh, around, around 80 million people and we have 22 uh, million bicycles in, in, uh, in Holland. Um, which uh, tells us that we're, uh, we're fun of uh, cycling. And we're now uh, investing a lot in, um, let's say, bicycle uh, uh, fast lanes throughout the, throughout the country. Uh, but the benefit of cycling also comes with the backside. We have, uh, it, it tends to be um, ruining its own success because we get more bikes as I said, we already have more bikes than people, and um, it comes with a lot of storage in the city. So how do we deal with the backside? And also with the idea that also now, where also the bicycles are getting electrified, we get lots of different speeds and sizes of, of bike, bikes that we have to accommodate. And how do we make sure that this accommodation, layout, this infrastructure for bicycles, is not the next bad thing that we're gonna do? Uh, laying out barriers into the city, that pedestrians are the next cyclists that we have to keep, uh, keep in, a, in account. So we try to make these um, uh, um, uh, developments into the cities where around station areas we integrate more program around the bicycle storages uh, and make it uh, not only a technical solution, but I think uh, we also have a notion that it's more about not the uh, optimizing it, but also making different um, uh, what is it? Uh, different goals that we need to take into account. So what we as designers also look at is what are the uh, sustainable development goals of the United Nations, 
where we uh, see it's not only a technical uh, challenges that we see, but it also has a human, human side. Uh, it's also making sure that everybody's uh, part of it, of these developments, and that it's uh, uh, that we also take the environment in account. Um, and all these challenges uh, we see in our work um, is leading. We just <laughs> launched uh, uh, our new website, which has uh, which has three different uh, slogans in it because we not only work in infrastructure. We don't only build bridges, but we try to connect uh, people to people, and we try to connect people to the, to the environment. Um, and but with doing that, we cr try to create common ground. Why are we doing it? We're not doing it because just designing things, but to improve our uh, uh, quality of life. So making cities, not just making a tick, but making uh, it really uh, uh, make a community out of it. Um, we work in a large field of infrastructure. We work on highway projects and also uh, railway uh, projects. Uh, but by illustrating how we deal with this, far over these uh, higher goals, I uh, selected not all of these, but I selected uh, uh, three projects to just take you uh, quickly through uh, th uh, through our way of working. Um, Starting with the uh, with the uh, Daphne Schippersbrug we did in Utrecht, which is one of those um, um, uh, bicycle lanes, uh, bicycle bridges that we now are are building over our highways and canals that we have dug uh, in this case dug out uh, early uh, uh, last century, and um, well and always a, a bridge structure crossing a canal like this comes with uh, some uh, um, uh, challenges to, to make it work. Uh, so we came up with a uh, design for a, a suspension bridge which was uh, uh, with, with a limited uh, uh, deck size of about 30 centimeters and uh, with a lightweight construction. Um, but I think um, also what you see is that these, uh, what I mentioned already, these bike lanes, also the, the bicycle bridge that we do, become wider and wider because the tra transportation is, or the, the, the amount of people that it has to carry is growing rapidly. Um, and also the, the way of transportation, you don't see it here, but we have a lot of also bikes with, a, 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 what is it, uh, uh, you can, uh, with the uh, lo loads that you can bring with you, uh, uh, including your kids, you can put in into the basket in front of you, uh, but it takes more and more space. Um, so I think for this project, the challenge was not only to uh, make a comfortable bridge with the, the, the right approaches, but also to in, in, uh, incorporate it into a existing uh, neighborhood, which was um, very uh, what is low density, but also very quiet. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, they uh, were confronted with the integration of a um, bicycle bridge, which was uh, a great opportunity that uh, it was not only um, the assignment to actually build the bridge, but it was a, a combination of public space, uh, integration of a new school, uh, and the bridge that the municipality and the state uh, department of infrastructure combined together into one project. Um, so that gives us the opportunity to actually uh, not only focus on the crossing of the canal, but also how can we make the, the footprint of the project as minimal as possible, and by actually um, integrating the, the ramps into the existing park that was here, uh, we actually uh, define the public space even more. Uh, instead of um, uh, working them out separately and um, trying to conquer with each other. So we, the bridge lands actually on the roof of the school, comes down, and as I said, it, it defines the space of the, uh, of the playground, uh, which means that we don't, didn't make, have to make any uh, fences around it, and that in the, in the weekends, actually, the whole parade playground also functions as a place for the, for the neighborhood. So it's... Um, an integrated approach of how do you make a comfortable and functional uh, bicycle route going over the school 
uh, and uh, over the canal, which is not only about the technical solutions for the, the, the main span of a, about 100 meters, but also on how to get down and integrate into the area. Uh, because it's uh, 100 meters, the bridge, the main span, it was named after Dr. Schippers, which was, was one of our um, uh, uh, top athletes, uh, where she grew up in this neighborhood, so it was a nice way to, to honor her. Uh, which also leads to, it also comes with this, you saw that maybe in an uh, earlier picture, uh, there was a lot of people enthusiastic when, when the bridge was opened, uh, not only to see, the, to see Daphne Schippers, but it also really resonates in the neighborhood. So people were against it, but now they're very much in favor of the bridge. Um, which brings me to another project, which is, uh, it, it's already a bit older, it's pre-pandemic. -pand uh, but it shows the way we work also with a, one of our uh, partners left to China, uh, started an office there, and it's a lucky knot, which is questionable if it if it's, can be called a bridge or that it's more, an, uh, and, and even if it's infrastructure. But we got the question for a bridge in a very fast new city layout near Changsha, in the heart of China, uh, where they wanted to start a bridge over the ri uh, existing river, um, which was very much about placemaking. Um, well, this was the actual the actual design brief was make these all these connections. So a connection from a higher uh, park and from the embankments to the other side, and also one connection going over a uh, quite a wide uh, uh, car road um, and. Um, in China, it works a bit different than in Europe. We have to come up with some different narratives of what the, the bridge project is about. And uh, we worked together with the Chinese office uh, and came up with a, a, a concept. We, we, had present, we presented 16 uh, different approaches to the client, and finally they picked out this one, which we worked out further, uh, which said that it was, instead of solving the, the, the puzzle, uh, we wanted to celebrate uh, all the connections we could make. Uh, and by doing that, we wanted to, uh, to make something which really stood out uh, as an iconic uh, object in that area. I can tell you later why. And we came up with this uh, Möbius ring, which we always find fascinating as, de as uh, Western designers. Uh, but it also had a, a kind of a, um, a link to the Chinese uh, uh, knotting, which is a, a folk art uh, craftsmanship. And by actually intertwining all these roots and creating a kind of 3D, 3D, what is, 3D um, labyrinthic object, uh, we uh, checked all the boxes for the connections that we needed to make, but we also made it into a place to go to, a 3D playground. So this was actually the winning image uh, when we uh, got the project. And it was not so much about the de actual design as um, mostly it was because of the, uh, um, what is the annotation of the image. So it, it stood for, it looked at this Chinese knot, uh, uh, which is more about prosperity and uh, uh, all good things in life. So that resonated uh, to the client and also to the, uh, we presented it, we also presented it online, uh, where also the people uh, were, were quite in favor of the, of the design. Um, and then we invited actually the, the engineers to actually make it happen. So we had to make the construction, had to adjust the sections which not, were not accurate during the competition uh, and make it uh, still look like uh, as presented. So this is uh, quite some while ago, 2014 construction happened and uh, oh, it uh, was finished quite later and as you see the difference from the first image uh, I showed of the location, uh, it was still quite rural. And in the time that we constructed the bridge, designed the bridge, constructed the bridge, uh, the whole area around it developed in an extremely rapid way. And uh, one of the things is that the bridge was actually um, meant as a kind of an iconic feature to yeah, uh, make this, to, to enrich this place and to give people 
uh, something to identify them uh, and identify them with this area. So in terms of sustainability, uh, uh, things like that, this is not so much about uh, efficient material, but it's really about uh, place making to, to get people connected to their places uh, in these uh, vast city layouts. Uh, and it also had some uh, really nice references to cultures, both Western and uh, uh, Chinese culture. Um, and you see that although the structure is 185 meters and it counts around 1,008 steps, uh, it really uh, fits in the area. Um, and uh, it took quite, quite, some, quite a while that it actually, actually opened it. Uh, and the ironic thing is that we noticed that it was opened through a, a publication by the Lonely Planet <laughs> of all, uh, of all uh, uh, presentations that uh, this actually happened uh, the moment it was opened by a local, uh, local group of uh, uh, ladies. Um, which also yeah, shows that the, the, the crossing the cultures and borders is, uh, is quite crucial. Um, something completely different of a different kind of skill, and that's also how we work. We don't have one handwriting. The architecture comes derives from the from the context and from the assignment. Um, where this one is the Zalige Brug, it's in, in the Netherlands. It starts with a story about how we fight water. You already heard something in the previous presentations on how water is the motor of decay. Um, I think this started, this is an image of uh, high water levels in the Netherlands in 1995, um, uh, where at the moment 250,000 people were evacuated because of the water and uh, the possible um, or just the decay of the dikes at that moment, uh, which did not happen. But uh, nevertheless, we started a big program, national program, on improving uh, the, the rivers. Uh, uh, river safety, so the room for the river it was called, and instead of hiring, of uh, making the dikes higher, uh, stronger, we actually uh, started demolishing them at several places. We moved them at so some places more land inwards. Um, uh, this is an image of the Waal by Nijm uh, at Nijmegen. It's in the east of the Netherlands, and you see here on the left, it's the uh, it's the uh, what is the, the, the river itself? And um, it was uh, one of the bottlenecks of the river. It went uh, from one kilometer uh, to 300 meters uh, width, uh, exactly at the point where it, where it passed the city, um, which led to more problems uh, with high water. And uh, instead of canalizing it, they decided to make a bypass to actually make it wider. So they mo we moved the dike 300 meters uh, land inwards. So it was previously on this, on the on the island you see here now, and it was moved backwards. Um, so this bypass uh, uh, was uh, erected, and therefore we needed to make some bridges. Um, and we happened to do the the smallest bridge in in the project, which was um, actually to not cross towards the city, but it was actually meant as an axis of the of the island. Uh, in in when there's high water coming. Uh, people or events should be evacuated from the island. Um, and what was nice is that you can see that um, 48, uh, around 48 hours ahead, uh, we see the water coming from Germany, uh, so we know which level it's going to hit and uh, when it's going to be. Um, so it's very much a controlled area, and this bridge is actually in the floodplains. Um, so we said it's not it should not compete with the bigger bridges that are really crossing towards the city. Uh, for instance, the, the one you see that in the top, it's from Nij. Uh, that was not built yet when we started. Uh, but we said we ma we're making a bridge which, which is actually more a recreational routing through the area. And oh yes, it has a function. It uh, has to be used with calamities. So yes, it's functional. But instead of making a straight bridge, we said we make a path that goes over the other side. And we make it very simple and rural. It's like this path, this step with stones going to the other side. Um, and uh, in, by doing that, it's always nice to say, 
uh, instead of making the straight bridge, we uh, made this, we proposed this one and made it 25% cheaper. So uh, design and architecture doesn't always mean that it becomes uh, more expensive. Um, but um, we even said, well, because it's in the floodplains and we want to show people where they are and what's happening here, um, we want to lower the, the bridge landings. So um, uh, statistically, the bridge, and especially the bridge landings, uh, will, uh, what is, will be submerged uh, 5 to 12 days a year. Therefore, we introduced, um, I, uh, we introduced these, uh, these stepping stones you see on the right uh, at the bridge landings uh, to actually uh, make the bridge accessible at certain moments. And at certain moments, uh, the bridge is just part of the whole. So this whole area, it's not only about water safety, but it was also said we have a second goal, and that's the spatial, the, the what is the uh, spatial quality of the area. It should add to the uh, living environment by making it one of the uh, the twelfth uh, city park that was uh, erected. And uh, after this project, really the orientation of the city which was with its back to the river, it really uh, changed uh, towards this area. So it took a long time uh, before the high water, <laughs> instead of the statistics five to 12 days a year, we had to uh, tell the story about the bridge submerging uh, for about three years uh, after completion. Uh, and I still said it needs to be baptized. So we have to wait. It's finished after we had the first high water levels. Uh, and in January 2018, uh, the water the water rose, and you see here people are still on the bridge. Where uh, a, a few days later, or a day later, the water levels uh, even submerged the the bridge landings, um, and still our state department is uh, closing off the whole area because it's uh, not safe. But people climb the fences, and walked onto the uh, walked onto the bridge and still were walking onto the island you can see people on the right back in the right uh, till the moment that also there that the island submerged and then there's no way to there's no reason to go on the bridge anymore but i think also this is uh, we as, as designers i think especially in this infrastructure project it's not something we design for ourselves because i don't i don't even live in the city um, but um, the complement of people climbing the fences and actually using this uh, as something to, as an experience to get closer to the high water, I think was, uh, was one of the bigger compliments. Um, when also, as I said, uh, the last moments uh, were also the island submerged. A day later, it totally submerged, so there was no way to get onto the bridge. But there was also no purpose to go to. So uh, I think it, and during summer, it's also nice that these elements that we made are still remnants that people can use as a, as a bench or park, park their bikes, what they do. Uh, uh, but also still remember the, the moments that they actually crossed it during high water um, and make them more aware. When now this summer, we didn't encounter the high water levels, but we have now the draws that are actually haunting us. Uh, so we have other challenges now. Uh, instead of fighting the water for years, we opened up now, but now we have to, to reconsider and we have to uh, maintain the water, uh, contain the water as long as possible in, in the higher grounds. Um, and that's something we, that's a mind shift again. Instead of getting the water away as, much, as quick as possible, we now are in the uh, time with climate change that we have to contain it as long as possible, which is another approach. Um, I think showing these uh, images, showing these projects, um, still we work on projects where we ha ha work on more uh, the biodiversity. Uh, we built some red bridges, and now we're also working on several projects to build uh, the, the wooden bridges um, to actually not only, but, but still had that more the, 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 the urge to work with different materials, but I think also to make, to have them fit into the area um, 
and not just focus on the, on the technical uh, uh, demands. And I think by doing that, um, I think we can make use of the different crises, the energy crisis, and also the more global issues that are playing now. So how can we turn them into nice designs? Not only nice, but excellent designs. Thank you.